Peter, what do you mean by health and energy through information? Well, we've changed the ball game a little bit because the, you, you're used to the natural therapist idea that the control framework of the body is in fact diet and nutrition. And this doesn't go far enough. Then we've got the paradigm of medicine, which is 1955 creek, that the body's controlled by enzymes and hormones. That isn't quite adequate, and we're saying there's something else, there's something else that has never been addressed and this is the exciting bit. We've found that you can go further and that there is a higher level of control in the body. Like when you're sick, something's gone wrong with the control system. Something's gone wrong with the software control of your body. And how are we going to fix it? Are we going to use diet? Or are we going to use enzymes, hormones, or in other words, medical treatment? There's something else which has never been tried. We've never used energy as such with information as such before. It is really quite a breakthrough. What science is NES Health based on? What discoveries? We didn't think there was any science when I discovered what was going on. We discovered structure where we, we weren't expecting structure to be found. I was doing strange experiments with little ampules and so on. What we've done since 2003 is go through the science literature to find out how on earth could I find structure in an energetic hologram of the body, which you would expect might be chaotic. If there's a structure, it means there's science. So science is about finding the rules in systems. Can I, it's getting a bit academic. There are three wonderful scientists that we've found. There are three wonderful scientists that we've uncovered in uh, our research. First of all, Alexander Gerwich, 1923, discovered that the body emits ultraviolet light and that this affects the division of the cell. In other words, the body is affected by light, which is emanating from the body. It's not being absorbed, it's being radiated. Once you get energy moving, you've got a field. So my case is that we do have a body field and we have to learn how to correct what's going wrong and then we can cure diseases. The next great scientist was Richard Feynman, a very famous physicist, who spent all his life um, saying that space isn't empty Space has got information. He's talking about signposts in space. This is a crazy concept. But a signpost in space is information in an energy field. Richard Feynman is a Nobel Prize winning scientist. Last of all, Milo Wolf in America decided that, the, you know, in quantum physics there are four or five hundred different particles all doing funny things. We call it the particle zoo. And um, Milo Wolf is an astrophysicist who was working on the Apollo communication systems for the space program. And he can also fix toasters. He's not, he's not one of these scientists that is off with the theory. He can, he's an immensely practical person. I, I like this. I've spoken to him. He's a wonderful man. He's saying that there are three particles that are making a field. And he himself can see that this would apply to medicine as a, a, just the biggest breakthrough we've ever made in biology. So those are the people who inspired and helped you. What new discoveries have you made? I was doing experiments with Chinese medicine. I used to be an acupuncture teacher. In fact, I founded a degree course in Australia uh, concerning a degree in Chinese acupuncture. And I was never happy with the explanations. And I began to do scientific experiments to see what was really going on. This is 1983. Then by 1990-something, I was able to say, I think we've got some structure. A repeatable structure started to come out of what I thought 
The idea of Chinese medicine is in fact a primitive idea of the body field. And I found structure, I found repeatability, and I found what you might call ordinality. In other words, in space, it's organized, like so many ancient languages, it's organized from right to left, not left to right. And I decided after 10 years, there's no chi, there's no life energy, but instead there's this magnificent body field that the body actually generates. What do you mean by the human body field? Describe it in a bit more detail. You've got to say where it comes from and what it is. This is science. You've got to define. We found out that the heart and the circulatory system actually make a magnetic, a paramagnetic energy, and that's what's picked up in MRI. There's nothing mysterious about it. It can be measured. The next thing was that we found that there's a response of the electron and the photon, these are subatomic particles, in the body field. And this, this streams this way, head to toe, up and down. So we've got this one little field here with the heart, which is sending a field out beyond the body. And we've got another matrix field which the cell biologists themselves are quite happy with since about 1986 quite a few cell biologists have said yes we like the idea of a matrix that can transfer information quicker than the nervous system like instantaneous knowledge about yourself and what's happening in the body hologram so if you say what it is it's magnetic, it's paramagnetic, it's electrons and it's photons. What are the implications of all this for healthcare in general? The implications is for the last hundred years we've been doing the wrong thing. And suddenly this huge field opens up and I guess I'm the first in the swimming pool so I'm swimming around saying, oh look at this, look at this. It's, it's a wonderland of new opportunities for medicine. But as you can see, the science is pretty difficult to get a grasp on. And the new direction for healthcare? The direction is that the body field ideas were basically dropped in the 1920s in tertiary education. And we're saying it's time to put them back because we've got a genome now. It's all very well to work out a genome. This is the information that the body field runs on. We're saying, what information goes into the body field? It's the genome. That you can't say there's alternative medicine, that's proper medicine, that there's one medicine, and we have to try to understand it. And the beautiful thing is that the people who discovered the genome don't know how to get the correct information back into the body, and we're saying, if we know how to correct information and put it into a body field, we can link up with the information of the genome to put correct information back where there's incorrect information. This will heal disease. Peter, how did you first get involved in this? What started your journey of exploration? Well, everybody gets a sore foot, don't they? And uh, I think all the doctors and healers in the world have all began on a great search uh, for, for why am I sick and why have I got a sore back? Uh, you know, the great questions of science. Nobody knows why you get a sore back. Nobody. <laughs> and we need to get better and better explanations for what goes on. And the problem is one of psychology. It's very hard. You can study a mouse or a rat, but studying yourself requires a great deal of restraint and objectivity. It's hard. And I guess, well, I got interested in yoga. I got interested in Chinese medicine. I kept thinking, well, why don't I have any energy? Why do I feel tired all the time? Why have I got chronic fatigue? What's going on? Uh, by the time I met Harry Massey, I had some answers. And um, Harry is better and works 12 hours a day instead of about one. And um, I'm the same. I've recovered energy and we've been able to heal it. 
healing is a great joy. And I think a lot of this has been lost in the idea of what I call the great split of saying there's the physical part of us and then there's the mental part. But when you get a body field, they're exactly the same thing because it all turns into information. <laughs>